So in the previous video we saw how functions work, how you can define a function and how you can then call a function with different values. And in this video we're going to look at something called anonymous functions. So we did actually come across anonymous functions in the previous video, I just didn't point it out so that you didn't get confused when learning how to define your first simple functions. So here you can see the function that we had in the previous video, slightly amended, to just display hello world to the console when the say hi function is called. And you can see the function that's defined on the right hand side of the equal sign doesn't actually have a name, it's the variable name of say hi that we use to identify the function. So this is an example of an anonymous function because it doesn't have any direct name itself. And I'm going to highlight this point by using an actual built-in JavaScript function called setTimeout. So setTimeout is a function that waits for a certain amount of time and then actually calls another function. So the setTimeout function takes two arguments. First of all, a function that we want to run and the time to wait before it actually gets called. So the time is in milliseconds, so if you pass a value of 2000 into there, that's actually two seconds. And the function name, let's actually replace that with our function and call say hi. So if you look in the console on the right hand side, after two seconds, the say hi function gets called and hello world gets logged out. But our say hi function isn't very useful and the chances are we won't want to call that anywhere else in our code. So instead of setting up that identifier of say hi, we could actually just pull out that anonymous function and pass it into set timeout independently. And as you can see, after two seconds in the console, the message is logged down. So hopefully you can see an anonymous function can be just dropped in anywhere else where you would be expecting a function definition. And certainly when you start working with the browser and HTML elements and events, Anonymous functions are used extensively, but for now if you just have an understanding that an anonymous function can be dropped into wherever a function definition is used, then you won't get confused when you see functions being used like this and they have no visible identifier. Of course if you prefer ES6 arrow functions, you can of course use those as anonymous functions as well, and if there are no arguments you simply use an open and closing parentheses in place of that function keyword. So we'll revisit functions and anonymous functions when we start looking at the browser, but in the next lesson we will look at JavaScript classes.